And we're going to start with our talk uh, from uh, Ivan. We're going to talk about profile likelihood in Julia. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, indeed, I'm Ivan. Uh, I work as a researcher and developer at InsysBio, and I will speak about profile likelihood, practical identifiability, and this talk is somehow linked to the systems biology uh, session we'll have, but in general, those methods are not limited by systems biology field and can be used wherever you have a model and you work in maximum likelihood estimation paradigm. So I'm going to speak about uh, profile likelihood in three aspects. First of all, what is it and why is it important? Secondly, what do we have? What are the current state of art methods? What do we have in Julia? What are we implementing right now? So uh, practical identifiability is commonly compared with structural one, and it's a nice excuse to advertise the work of structural identifiability.gl once again. Uh, but if structural identifiability focuses on the structure of the model with all available data, uh, practical identifiability studies the precision and possibility to estimate the parameters with the data we um, have. There are many methods to study practical identifiability. You may have used Fisher information matrix, Bayesian approach. There are certain reasons why profile likelihood is sometimes preferred, even though it's a very computationally demanding approach. I've came up with at least three reasons. First of all, it's one of the most reliable uh, ways to su study practical identifiability because you, fi you kind of get the physical shape of the likelihood function around the optimal value. Secondly, with certain caution, it can, used, it can be used as a proxy to study structural identifiability too in the situations where structural identifiability methods are not applicable. And it, is also, it can be also used to study more general statistics like prediction confidence bands, validation confidence bands, and so on. That, to my mind, make, makes pro profile likelihood methods a rather powerful tool. So this picture commonly, from a classical article, commonly illustrates what is it about. So you uh, study the, uh, you fix a parameter of interest and study to the left and the right direction whether it intersects a certain confidence level, then it's identifiable or not, then it's not identifiable. I've listed some packages in MATLAB, R, Python, which um, I'm aware of and which we used to study uh, profile likelihood, and also two packages I'm aware of in Julia. I'm aware about the first one because I've participated in this impl in impl in implementation, uh, and uh, it was implemented about three years ago, I think, to prove an article we published about profile likelihood method. It uh, hasn't been updated for a while, and now we desire to renovate it completely, and I'll speak about the methods which are drafted there. Uh, the second package, uh, it implements the basic profile likelihood.gl, implements the basic stepwise profile discovery. Uh, it also, uh, I didn't test it much, but it also has nice functionality around uh, discovering the confidence regions and two-dimensional areas. Uh, so I'll illustrate the uh, methods uh, we implement right now by an, an example proposed uh, by Maurice Eisenberg to study profile likelihood. It's a small model, uh, a taxal treatment model, which is a hemotherapy drug, but that doesn't really important, not important for us now because we are not about biological science here, but about the, uh, the methods. And we'll study one of the parameters of this model, uh, which uh, is a sensitivity of proliferating cells to, to this drug. So uh, the most basic approach, which can be implemented in a, like a while loop, as the name of the room suggests, uh, you fix a parameter of interest, you make small steps to the left and to the right of it, and re-optimize all other parameters. So with this model, it works fine. Uh, however, it is a very computationally demanding approach because you the, more small, the smaller steps you make, the more precise your estimation is. At the same time, you need to make hundreds of optimizations, and here we are measuring the performance of methods by the number of likelihood function calls. So a natural way to 
speed it up is to make this step adaptive. Uh, there could be multiple strategi uh, strategies implemented in different packages. So here the, thank you, uh, the uh, kind of linear extrapolation is proposed when you have certain knowledge about the previous fields and you target some reasonable values of likelihood functions to make steps adaptive. That already gives you a certain increase in time. But if you look at what is happening here, you may say, well, it looks like we are integrating a differential equation system, so we are kind of following a certain trajectory and making some steps. And indeed, another way to approach this problem is to obtain the profile as a solution to the differential equation system. Uh, the system itself is derived from formulating this problem I as an optimization problem. I wouldn't go into details how it is done, but there are certain articles. Um, and it seems like a great advance because you no longer need to optimize, run hundreds of optimizations. You just need to solve a differential equation system, which people use, kind of know how to do it, uh, especially in Julia. But uh, in fact, the system is not that nice. In general, it's a differential algebraic system with a non-constant mass matrix, which is the Hessian of the likelihood function. Uh, if you study not the functions of the parameters, but the parameters itself, the system is a bit less cumbersome, but still uh, you either need to solve it directly, compute the inverse and transform it to OD system, compute pseudo-inverse if Hessian is not invertible, and so on. But with this model, it works great. It gives a great speed up. Uh, the steps are adaptive, and uh, the profile is nice and smooth. However, if you don't want to deal with Hessians, uh, a commonly used trick is to uh, simplify the system a bit and replace the Hessian with something more friendly. Uh, I'm not going into details why it is possible, but you can uh, use a certain correction factor to assure that you are staying uh, on the path and get rid of the Hessian. That is sometimes the most speedy method. However, uh, the trade-off is accuracy because you can um, get off the true profile. You either need to adjust this correction factor, and it is a nice kind of problem how to do it smart, or to run re-optimizations after each step of the integrator, then this method is something like an uh, uh, adaptive step method. So the third idea to address this problem was proposed long ago. It's the idea to focus more on confidence intervals estimation rather than uh, profile discovery. And the endpoints of confidence intervals are described by a certain system. The authors of the paper proposed their own approach. Uh, we uh, kind of also proposed our approach to solve the system uh, by an optimization procedure. We published an article and implemented this likelihood profiler um, package. Uh, it outputs the uh, interval itself, but also we can construct an adaptive grid to recover and the shape of the profile and assure that we are on the right path. However, the original implementation relied on this analoped augmented Lagrangian, and uh, it didn't really correspond to the termination criteria required by the method. And that made uh, usage of this package <laughs> sort of an art. And we received certain comments about its usability. So now, we, uh, with the advances at optimization.gl, we are re-implementing this method too. And it will be in this new release too. So to sum up, uh, those other methods are now drafted in a separate repo. They'll be in likelihood profiler to, uh, uh, in the new uh, version. I think that there is no golden method here, but the power of profile likelihood approach comes for mixing them together and trying this, trying that. You tried integration, integration, now you change to optimization and so on, and that's why we want to have it together. And the last message is that even though it has been studied for a while, there is much more to optimize here, and Julia's CML can bring a lot of power here. So once it's released, I will be very grateful for your benchmarks, use cases, issues, and any help. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I'm afraid we don't have time for questions. I'm very but sorry, but uh, I'm available here. For, <laughs> yeah, for the so rest maybe of questions during lunchtime is a great option.